Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Ram. This is the second time I'm recording this video, which should be good for you, bad for me. Why, you might ask? Because OBS has decided that the default mic for my computer is the HTC Vive, even though I have it set to the headset that I'm using. So, as I hinted to a couple of people on yesterday's video, today we're talking about an F4 and an F16. Well, the hinted part is that they're tiny, and there's the center of mass and center of lift, as you'd expect, center mass is slightly further back than it would normally be because of these probes, which I can't give you a good look at out there, so I'm going to show you right now. They have the four tiny sensors, cubes, uh, cu uh, uh, cube struts, the antenna, uh, the tiniest probe core, a little uh, decoupler, that is how they're attached, and you can see there's a solar panel clipped in right here. That is how they can maintain connection. They're not good for relays because you can't relay with these, but they're good for, you know, a quick little deploying of a probe. And you might have noticed that they are... Oh, I just love that engine startup sound. Sorry, I got distracted by it. You might have noticed that they do not have parachutes on them, so they do have to be deployed while you are sitting on the ground, which reminds me I need to change the deploy force on them because currently they eject out at such force that uh, they will be highly likely to break at least part of themselves, as you can see by this. Yeah, oops. Oh, no. Was that Jeb? Did I just kill Jeb already? This is the first video I've made in a long time, and I just killed Jeb, didn't I? Where is it? Y yeah. Yeah, I killed... I... Mm. This time around, we're just going to go ahead and fly the normal F4 without anything else. Now, like I said, this is a miniature plane. And it's also more of a inspired by the F4 than a replica. As you can see, we do have canards here. Those help with the controllability and the um, center of mass versus center of lift being correctly placed. Because the if, if I had part highlighting in flight, you would see that uh, they're all the way up to the front here. They're taking up like all of this space internally, but they just look like tiny little clips out the back, which is, well, out the back of the cockpit, which is what I excuse me, wanted them to. You can also see that they don't turn very much, but they do offer a slight bit of added control. The tail fins don't turn very much as well, simply because if they did, they would clip into the engines. We're using two Juno engines configured under a tail section so that it is looking somewhat like the F4, and you can see that on the side, or from a top-down view, you can see that the, um, the intake, like the line of tanks that forms the intake to engine is actually turned in somewhat, so the engines are closer together and are more correctly under the tail, while the intakes are more spaced out so that they can look more like a proper intake by being about half of it. And they're actually also slightly lower than the engines, so the engines are slightly closer to the center of mass. And you can see now that uh, we do actually have the ability to get a pretty good speed on here. Um, but you have to be going in a straight line for that, obviously. The tail fin, I'm really happy with the shape, although it could be angled down ever so slightly more, I believe. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I'd have to look at a picture of an F4 again. I think these are angled more down than they are here. And the wing tips, I wanted to have that slight angle up. Obviously, the wing tips on the real thing, that are the part that is angled up, is a bit bigger than this, and that was a weird thing the audio just did. But this, I feel like, is overall a faithful recreation while maintaining a lower size and lower part count. I don't remember what the exact part count is, and all these vehicles you see stopped around here are from me working on landing gear, because the, strength, the spring strength and tamper do not work very well to allow you to handle landing gear as well as I would like to, and um, fortunately I have things working somewhat okay. Although, the biggest problem is with the F-16 that I will be showing you next. The F-4 has uh, quite a bit better landing performance at this time. I'm going to go ahead and throttle down real low. Actually, I want to keep it about one-third throttle with the Juno engines, so that we do have a bit of speed, a bit of capability to speed if we mess up the landing but don't crash. You know, always good to have the engines on somewhat when coming in for a landing. I'm actually going to bring that down just a little bit more. And probably should put the landing gear out maybe a little sooner than just before touchdown. But coming in very gently. And, oh dear. Yeah, these, these landing gear can be a little tricky. Now I did 
turn down the strength on the brakes, specifically because things could be tricky. And I was trying to do a minor correction there, but forgot to turn off the steering on the front landing gear before touchdown, which uh, kind of kind of an important thing to remember to do. But anyhow, here's an F-16, and it's a little more complicated than it may seem at first because it is carrying tiny probes on it as well. These ones are little rovers, which should function properly, but last time I deployed them on the ground, they got stuck in the ground, and the time before that, the steering mysteriously broke for no apparent reason. So, excuse me if I don't have the utmost confidence in their capabilities. I'm going to go ahead and deploy them right here at a relatively low altitude so that I hopefully can stick around and fly around just a little bit while they are falling. And this thing does not quite have a uh, thrust to weight ratio of one, I believe, because it looks like we were just losing speed and actually started falling backwards. Let's see. Nope, I can start accelerating upwards, so we do have a one to one ratio or better, but I can also be super maneuverable with this F-16-like. And you can see the uh, tail is properly angled downward slightly. We have those cube struts just from where those were hooked up on this version of it. The main version of it does not have those. And again, the whole thing with this is that it's somewhat close to an F-16 and low part count, so things aren't going to be exactly the same, but I'm quite happy with it as it is. How close did... oh, there it is. I was gonna say, how close did that... how close did that... how close did we get to that? There you go, I did a couple of loops and now I'm falling next to it. Oh wow, falling further than I actually meant to there, but uh, we're okay, and if things really got bad, I can always activate the afterburner for that added punch of power. I don't know exactly how much of a difference it makes in our ability to have speed, but it definitely, well, ability to maneuver and have speed, our agility, our agility, essentially, but it definitely does have quite a bit of assistance in our agility. And one of the rovers has landed, the other one is still coming in. I'm going to do this uh, low speed loop, a um, little bit lower speed than I meant to be, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop the throttle even more, put out the landing gear, and hopefully also come in for a landing. Okay, that one is just about to, uh, just about to touch down. Now the problem with the F-16 that I've struggled very hard to fix, and is still having some issue, oof, besides uh, the landing gear steering, which I again forgot to turn off, and the rear wheels uh, having that wobbly thing that they like to do. Other than that, I have this inexplicable issue with the front wheel bouncing like crazy. And speaking of wheels being crazy, that one was a little bit insane. Here's one of the rovers. This is the second time I've had one not land on its face like it's supposed to. It seems that the wheel actually isn't getting any traction. Of course, the battery is also being killed anytime I hit the buttons. And yeah, this is this is the weird error with broken steering that I had on the other one too. I don't know why this happens, but the steering inexplicably breaks on half of the vehicle. Here's the other one, or is this the other one that I just dropped? Yes, it is. As you can see, this one is actually rolling along. And you can see that the steering works as you'd expect. So we can accelerate, we can steer. You can't hold full acceleration for very long because you will run out of charge. So these things are very small and fairly slow, but they work quite well. Uh, it's just a little parachute, RTG. Uh, we got the probe control and coupler, of course. And so they're very tiny, very, wow, I can't believe I didn't break it doing that just now. But yeah, they, are a nice little base to drop something off on. I imagine you could very easily add on some sensors to it, or just use it as a little exploration vehicle on its own, maybe even put a Kerbal on top with a chair, or uh, take off the parachute, mount it to something that lands, and then you have a little rover that you can have. Whoa, that was an interesting little bump in the ground. Hey, maybe we can knock the other one onto its correct Nope, it's just going to be pushed. And did we get stuck or is it just, no, we just were very low on power because we only have an RTG on board. 
yeah, that's not going to work very well. So yeah, anyhow, there's these two probes, which I will offer downloads to as sub-assemblies, and then of course the F-16 and the F-4. If you jump with the shoot deployed, they can... <laughs> Boink! That's funny.